Hi, welcome to Door to Door with your host, me, Judy Stakey. Join me as I travel all over interviewing songwriters about their process. Hi, I'm Judy Stakey, and you're here for another episode of Door to Door. I'm sitting here today with Jay Baumgardner. Jay Baumgardner has quite the repertoire. Some of his highlights include mixing and producing Papa Roach's triple platinum album, Infest. Mixing Evanescence Fallen, which was nominated for five Grammy Awards. He now owns NRG Recording Studios, where Kanye West and Miley Cyrus have recorded. And to top it all off, he is just creating a new app. Hi, Jay. Hi. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Thank you for interviewing me. You're welcome. So tell me first, how did you get started? I got started by being a musician. What was your instrument? I started off playing saxophone. Oh. And, uh, you know, this didn't... That'll impress the girls. In school, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really did. And uh, went from there to, uh, to playing keyboards and played in, you know, rock bands and just kind of did, did gigs in various rock bands. And then I uh, was kind of the guy in the, in the band that, you know, knew how to work the PA and knew how to do a little recording and make demos of the band and make demos and were trying to get a record deal and take it around and people said, you know, your band sucks, but the demos sound pretty good. And, you know, maybe you should be a producer or an engineer or something. And so I finally decided to go go with that. And was there someone that came along that gave you a start? Um, yeah, there were a few few people, a few different instances of, of things that happened. You know, over, over the years, it wasn't it wasn't a uh, you know sort of a gradual thing. It wasn't mm -hmm. a you know you get a little thing would happen and then then kind of nothing for for a little while and then something else something and then, else right. and you know what it kind of took years to what was to get your going. first in your opinion thing that got you like this this sold a lot more or it garnered more attention or it garnered awards what was that first project that you really felt like wow i think i can obviously the the Papa Roach infest i mean that's the one that actually the first one that actually made money right. i mean i had some other other ones that were successful, but that's the first one that I remember where I actually got a, a, a royalty check. There you go. How would you describe your style or method of producing? Because every producer is, is different. I don't know if there's a, a method. I, I just think from being a person who was a musician that was in a band, I just sort of approach it as being sort of, a, I sort of joined the band for a while, become a part of the of, of the group and sort of work in, in that way, like I'm, a, you know, the fifth or sixth member, just get in there and sort of work on the music and dig in and do what I can do and bring out what I can and make it the best I can. And Is your recording process the same every time? Mm. Do you start with the drums every time? Do you start with the vocals every time? Do you sometimes it's Not, always different? It, it's all it's always kind of different, you know. Okay. It, it yeah, it, it varies, you know. I don't have a I don't have a set a really a, a set process these days, you know, with, because of Pro Tools and all the things you can do with demos or or, or whatever. There's a lot of different things you can do mm -hmm. these days. Do you ever get involved in the songwriting process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I started it wasn't really cool for producers to to be songwriters yeah no they, they kept on separate sides of the room yeah. yeah it was very separate bands really didn't want producers to bands wanted to write their own music mm -hmm. oh absolutely it was uh no input <laughs> yeah it was very uncool i mean not that they wouldn't take input but they didn't want anyone else's name to be on there as songwriters absolutely so i definitely ended up doing some songwriting even though i wasn't credited as songwriting it would definitely be called songwriting these days right this wasn't credited as songwriting you know it was a different time and people were concerned about what perceived as absolutely these days it's sort of anything goes but it's changed so much, hasn't it? It's just, you're right, because it used to be, I mean, developing and managing songwriters, if you were an artist, you were not a staff songwriter. You were not going to write a song for Faith Hill. Absolutely not, you know? Right. It was very separate, and now it's everybody's writing for everybody else. You know, yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. It just doesn't matter. So, yeah. yeah. What is the biggest highlight of your career so far? I don't, I don't really look, I'm not nostalgic, particularly. I, li I just keep going, you know? I like working every day. I just enjoy the work. I enjoy coming in and working and and trying new stuff. And I, I, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not a nostalgic person. I don't, I'm not looking back at... Well, that leads into you now own NRG Studios. Yeah. So this is probably a highlight of your career also, is owning these studios, maybe? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. I, I like getting out of the house and coming here every day. <laughs> 
You know? How long have you had the studio? Since 1991, approximately wow. 90, 91. Okay. So, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, we've had we've had you know a lot of fun times here. A few a few a lot, hits. A lot, a lot of records come through. A lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot lot of, of records. People. So I understand you've created an app now, which is fantastic. Will you share with us how you came up with the idea and what it does? Well, a few years ago, I was in the studio with the guy that ran iTunes for Apple, and um, I was talking to him about the metadata, that, that there was no metadata in, on iTunes as far as the producers and the different musicians that were on each track. Right. He said that the labels didn't provide him with that metadata. I was like, you know, you're Apple, you guys can just get this, and he just kind of said, oh, it's not our priority or whatever. And uh, he said, it was, you know, such a big deal for you, why don't you do it? I was like, okay, but I, I had no, you know, experience in tech and anything. So it took me years, you know, thinking about it. And then I, I finally got a couple partners and we uh, started a company called Muso AI. We're using artificial intelligence. We're getting real time metadata when you're in a session, when you're recording or writing a song. And so we're getting all your songwriting data, your credit information, your information on what equipment you're using, if you're at a studio like this, or if you're at your home studio, whatever, and we're entering all that information in. Wow. Um, so it all it all travels with you and, and as it, it accumulates. And then, you know, when you're ready to put your song onto uh, Spotify or, or whatever, you know, you have all that information so that, you know, you're, you're able to get paid correctly. Right. All your publishing information is correct and everything. And that's fantastic. So, uh, so that's a big problem out there. Yeah. So all everybody. The information. Well, if you can make it a standard, you know. That well, that, this that's is, hopefully the yeah, idea. Exactly. The idea. So we're we're putting a lot of effort into, into making it really easy for, you know, musicians, mm. uh, you know, for artists to use. Right. Uh, when do you expect it to launch? Uh, a couple months. Oh, fast! Oh, wonderful! Yeah, theoretically. How do you stay current musically? Um, I have a girlfriend that's much younger than I am. <laughs> I listen to about all the stuff that she listens to. Mm -hmm. So, when you're meeting with an artist for the first time, um, what is that X factor to you? I don't know. You know, it's like you it's, you're looking for somebody that's it, 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 there is there is like an X factor. You know, there is like <laughs> something where you're like, this guy's got something. Or girl or whatever you can sort of see oh they're gonna be successful it's hard to quantify what that is sometimes mm -hmm. absolutely but you can kind of see it in, in people usually what you know what I mean you're like oh there, there's something there but I mean it's like that with anything you can usually see it with in anything you see it with someone you're like oh they, they have something there's a little bit bright they're just shine a little bit brighter you know it's interesting for me it's like it's always different so too it, it's not necessarily the same thing they all have something that just is like that that thing. It's a je ne sais quoi. I don't yes. know what it is, but it is there. Yes. Yeah. So do you have any tips for somebody who wants to follow in your footsteps? What advice would you give them? Don't don't quit. <laughs> you know, you just gotta be persistent. It's just like uh you just really have to put the hours in, you know? That's really all that I that I've done is I keep doing it every day, every day, every day. Yeah. You know, especially in, in mixing. Produce, producing is some, something that, you know, you can, I think you can be relatively young and be very good at it. Mixing, I think it takes a lot more time and hours to get good and be consistent. It's just gonna take time and... Talk about using your ears. Yeah. Yeah. The ultimate test of using your ears. You know. Do you have any, um, do you have a good mixing tip that you wanna give young mixers and say? Don't, don't. Don't play the music too loud. <laughs> I will suck at that. <laughs> no, no, no. When, I mean, literally, when you're when you're mixing, if, yeah. if if you're mixing, and it's hard because you want to, you want to turn it up. I I love to turn it up. I, I'm the I, I you know I find it very difficult to follow my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can mix at a very low volume. Your mixes will sound better. Another question would be: Is that you've been credited with creating hit singles for so many groups, for Bush, for Gavin Rossdale, for Evanescence, for Hoobastank? Um, is there a is there a hit trick to that? Is there a is there a formula to that? Is there a process that you that, that's yours? Um, I mean, you just sort of uh, cut out parts that are boring. 
<laughs> and, and if there's something that either cut it out or you add something to it that brings it up if it's you know if you can't cut it out then you then you add something to it to make it not boring it's not it's not rocket science really you know it's like it's interesting listening to you from a um, talk from a very technical and very um, musicianship perspective because it is it, in, in a lot of ways, it is that simple. It's like you're looking at something, it's like, okay, what does it need? And what does it need to get, go away, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's. I mean, there's. I mean, there's a lot of. I, I mean, I'm, I'm really oversimplifying things. There's just, I understand. You know, there's a lot of things that go into that rhythmically and harmonically, and you know, you can get very deep into of course into things why things don't work and do work, and you can, you know, that's but, a master class though. Yeah. But, but but I mean, to the to the to the basic thing is if if, if something is like not working and and or, you know, or if it's like this part sucks, you know, you take it out and you you keep the good bits and get rid of the bad bits and. For beginners out there, it's perfectly put. Very well said. And, and, you, and, and you can't, you just can't kid yourself about what those bits are. And you, and you got to be, you know, brutally sort of honest and go, go through and go. Well, this is the only good bit here, and the rest sucks. And it's hard because a lot of people don't want to hear that. So honesty must play a big role in there too. Yeah, that and that's and that's that's the really hard part. It's like to be honest in in music. It's like. That's a very hard. That's a very hard thing. It, it, I mean, art. You have to. That sort of has to be the thing you're 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 most honest about if you if you want to be successful in it. Is art and, and the thing you have to to do. It's like. But it comes from our souls and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the rest of your life can be a, a, a mess. I mean, that's why <laughs> that's why many artists like the rest of their life is a mess. But yes. and, and art, they they really excel is because. They have to. They focus their honesty on their art, and the rest of the life they just they let everything slide because they they focus so intensely on that that it's hard for them to deal with everything else. You can't do everything, you know. But everyone tries. <laughs> we all try forever. Now. Yeah. So last question is, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Hmm. There's a lot to choose from. I don't know. Um, hmm. I've stumped him on the last question. I love this. Maybe I could, if I could read minds, maybe. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. There was a good Mel Gibson movie about that, What Women Want, and he could read women's minds. It's very valuable. Mm. Very valuable. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I can. I want to fly. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much. I so thank you. appreciate it. It was lovely meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thank you for joining me.